Hey there guys, how's it going? Reaper here and I'm back with another painting video. And we're back with the whole non-combatant characters. Because I want to get a nice town fleshed out ready to go so the guys carry massive swords and shields around. Because it just doesn't look right. But if you add a little bit of personality to the town, it just helps. But anyway, we've already skipped half of this like colour. But it's primed in a standard high coat grey, is what I use. It's a grey primer milk meant for acrylics cheapest thing I could find for a grey primer and we're just covering the flesh with elven flesh for the first uh, first layer and these paints are very thin so it takes a while for them to stick although it was only really the flesh and the white that was the problem like the light colors are normally a problem with things like that but now we've moved on to Necromancer's cloak which is for his boots and the belt he's got a small belt but like, it's clearly visible but you can't see the other side of it, so you sort of forget about it sometimes. And it's just this little bit on the back, nice strip, and then that's done. And then we move on to Wolf Grey. This is kind of a bluey grey. It's not really a grey, it's actually more of a blue colour. But I figured it would be nice to him to be wearing something other than leather. Because everything basically is leather coloured from what I've seen, but now if you add some more colour to it, it makes them stand out that bit more and it makes them look just how it should do, really. Because towns should be, have variety in them. There shouldn't be just everyone's the same colour, everyone looks like this, everyone has these. It's, oh, this guy is nice blue shirt, half an eye. Well, you actually end up with one eye in this somehow. Like, one eye just doesn't work. So it just stays off and he's lost his eye. It's the theory behind that. But that's it for the wolf grey, and then we move on to leather brown. Because you have to have leather in there somewhere. Like even if you want to have some variety, leather is the primary colour. So, leather bottoms. Something simple, not a big chunk of the model, so it still doesn't overwhelm the other colours. And it works. The grey and the leather actually work really well together, more than I thought they would. And here we move on to mummy robes, which is an off-white colour and I use it for the apron, but this requires three layers I use in the end. But I do them in between other colors, so that I'm gonna do this one now, leave it, do another color, let that dry, and then go on to the next one. Because that way, it keeps the painting flowing, keeps you in the focus of getting all this painted up, ready to go. So I find if I paint something, leave it for a while, let it dry, and come back, I miss bits. Whereas if I'm switched on, focused, doing it, it works really well. Well, it works anyway, but it's easier if you just keep in the mood and keep flowing and it doesn't take as long, which is always good. And as you can see, I do make a few mistakes where the paint's too thin, so it just doesn't run properly. So when you're painting something, a thin line like stem, it does spread out slightly on the end. But we come back later on with the um, wolf gray and fix that up straight away. And that'll be it for the mummy robes for the first look kit, um, coat anyway. And then we go back to Elven Flesh just to touch up the skin as the skin needed a second coat as well just to make it, well, make it a solid colour essentially. It's going to be washed anyway so it's not that essential to do but I like to have all my base layers nice, solid and ready to go just so that there's none of that grey primer part like poking through. So I think I will use grey primer for most of my models now as it's cheap and it re works really well. Like paint sticks really well. And then we're back onto the second coat of mummy robes, which I haven't quite waited long enough for this. I should have done another color first, but it turns out all right in the end. It just, I would do the neck, do another color before going back to this one again, as it wasn't quite dry. So it's more spreading paint around than it is actually painting. Now I've gone with a new lighting setup for this as well, as I found it worked out before, a lot of the problem with the focus in the camera isn't the camera, it's the light source. Because the light doesn't light up the area enough that the camera can pick it up. Okay, now before we go back on there, we move on to Army Painter's Gunmetal. And he's, he's washing out a mug, so I figured I'd make it a metal mug. As that would be probably the most common type you find, it would be metal or wood. Wood's not the greatest, so it would probably be metal. 
And then I move on to Army Painter's Cobalt Skin, which is just for the rag that he's um, cleaning the rug and mug with. I didn't want it white because he's cleaning with it, so it's going to be dirty. But I didn't want it dark either because it would look strange. So this is a nice lighty brown color. And I think it works really well in the end. And then we move on to the hair. He hasn't got much. He's, like, he's a nice bald top and hair around back and sides. But I'm going with Army Painter's Desert Yellow. So I wanted to give him a sort of mousy blonde look instead of the sort of black or it's dark brown or even ginger. I do ginger a lot. I don't do a lot of blonde, so I thought I'd try it with this. And then we move on to the highlight stage before the washes. Because I wanted to do the skin first. So if I get the skin highlighted up, then I can move on to the wash and it blends it. But I'm using Army Painter's Corpse Pale for the skin. And it is actually a, well, it turned out in the end it wasn't that much difference because I covered a lot of the skin in this corpse pail. There's not a lot of detail. So the, the wash just sat and covered up the elven flesh in the end. But it does turn out okay and he looks the right color that I wanted. And then we move on to the final coat before the washes of mummy robes, which is just to block it in and make sure as little as possible of that green, oh, not green, of that gray primer comes through. Because the less of that that comes through, the easier it will be to highlight up after the washes. And then we move on to the washes. I just take Army Painter's Flesh Wash to cover all the skin and the hair. Because whenever you're, I'm doing the wash, I might as well feel like I might as well cover the hair as well as the face. So it all sort of blends a little bit because it is all one thing. The color difference is subtle enough that it works. But you could easily skip the um, highlighting or skip washing the hair and use a soft tone or probably not a strong tone. It would look a bit funny, but definitely a soft tone would work nicely on that hair. And then we move on to, I've done, I decided I don't want to do the whole thing as one wash color like I normally do. So I thought I'd add some color washes in there and wolf gray goes really well with the blue. Like Army Painter's blue tone, I think is designed for wolf gray and well, wolf gray and all their blues essentially. And like it should be really. But it just, it sits really well and it changes the color just enough that you can highlight back up. And then we move on to Army Painter's soft tone, which is for everything else. Like his boots, his bottoms, his apron, even the mug and his rag thing he uses, I've done that in soft tone. Now I like the way, it, because soft tone is gonna stain the light color, that's mummy robes, but I feel like that works really well because he's not gonna have a clean robe. Like no one working at a tavern in that sort of era is gonna be clean. They're gonna be covered in dirt and it's gonna be, look like that essentially. But then we move on to the highlight stage where the color has gone kind of funny. I'm not sure what my camera was doing there. The color's gone a little bit funny for that, but it's just, I took the mummy robes that I've done and I'm just picking up all the edges and the like big surface areas that won't be that day. And it just brings the color back up to where it should be, like where it was originally intended. And it still keeps that whole run down, dirty. It basically, it gives it a 3D look and a more realistic look based on the world that they're in and it turns out all right I'm quite impressed with this mini once it's finished there we go that's the mummy robes and the apron done and then we move back to wolf gray just to touch up the edges of the t-shirt because as you can see the wash now it's dry has really stained it to a blue so wolf gray is brilliant to come back up to because it'll just pick up those edges and make it look shiny. Well, not really shiny, it'll make it look three-dimensional and like the light is hitting only on the raised edges. And they go really well together. Which, I know it sounds strange because they are the same color, but wolf gray mixed with blue wash goes really blue. Whereas if you mix blue with a blue wash, it doesn't really change that much. But I think because wolf gray is more of a gray tone, it helps and it actually makes it pop that bit more and it's a nice color to work with if you want a blue top. 
or any form of blue clothing really and I might even when I do a draw try the skin color like that now we move on to highlighting the hair which is just desert yellow just bringing out some of the individual strands of hair and the eyebrows don't forget the eyebrows in these models they look really weird without them but then we move on to army painters dungeon gray which I don't I don't have the footage of me painting the white of the eyes but that was just dotting in the pupils of the eyes I use whatever dark color I get hold of first because they just blend nicely and this is just to highlight up his boots I believe I do the top line of the belt I'm not sure if the footage is for there for that but it's just the belt and the boots highlight up with this it just makes everything sort of pop and it makes it look it adds to the realism essentially and the immersion and then we move on to the final color which is army painters matte black and that's just the paint in the base all my bases for models are going to be in the black as i feel like black is the most versatile color you could use as weird as that sounds because it's black but you can put a black base down on grass you can put it down on stone put it down on wood it doesn't matter what it is people will ignore the black part and look at the floor around them and it will understand Whereas if I'd done a cobblestone look on this, it would look weird on stone. Well, it would look great on stone. It would look weird on wood or grass. Whereas black just blends with everything. But that's it for the model. Here's a few final photos of the model in the end. Now you can see the eye went a little bit funny. Like it's got one really big eye and one little eye. But it works out, it adds some flair to the character. But cheers for watching guys. Like, subscribe if you did enjoy. And I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.